Hey, Chemstars, this is Mrs. Vandoy, and now this is Levi. He didn't want his sister Lily to get all the credit, so he wanted to be a guest speaker too. So he's saying, all right, boys and girls, why don't you pay attention to some gas laws because this is the ideal time to do it. <laughs> I'm going to go now and explore some ideal gas laws. You see his little mouth moving? Yeah, all right. So bye, everyone. All right, so there was Levi wanting to get in the act too. So I have thrown the um, the challenge down for um, Ollie. I think he's another one that should be a guest speaker. So that's Mrs. McCauley's other dog. So let's talk about the ideal gas. Um, and this is when we are not changing anything. So this is like a snapshot. So if I were to take a picture boom of the conditions right now okay nothing's changing right now so let's take a look at FET and see what I'm talking about all right so once this uh, activity gets going all right so if I were to take a a snapshot boom right there okay what are my conditions I have a temperature I have a pressure uh, and it wouldn't be changing it's a snapshot boom it's like a screenshot boom all right here I can do that right now Boom, screenshot, all right? Here, let's see what I got. Boom, there's my screenshot, all right? So here's my exact pressure. Here's my exact temperature. I can get out my ruler and find the exact volume, all right? But what else can I can I, can I I figure out here? I can count. Oh, I'm, I hope you can too. I can count my, how many molecules I have. All right, and that's something that we really haven't really talked about. I talked about how many pumps I had before, but I didn't talk about how exact how many molecules or exact how many moles I have. So I can really relate four things here. I can relate temperature, pressure, volume, and how many moles. All right, that's what those little gas molecules represent is how many moles. Okay, that would be the ideal gas law. Okay, so here we go again. So, however, if you don't know one of those four quantities, pressure, volume, moles, or temperature, you can solve for it. And again, that is the ideal gas law. And we're going to incorporate another term, and that's going to be R. Okay, so what is the equation? I wrote it big. PIV equals NERT. All right, and I think some are pretty obvious. What's P? Pressure. V is volume. N is moles. We kind of used that before. R is a gas law constant, all right, and T is temperature. So let's put this back together. Let me, let's define everything because it's more than just pressure. It is exact pressure in the units of atmosphere. You must be in atmospheres. What if you're not given atmospheres? You need to convert to find it. So what about volume? Volume must be in liters. So if you're given milliliters, you're going to have to convert it to liters. And moles, guess what is moles? All right, that doesn't change. And here's this idea. Let's actually, let's, let me jump down to temperature. All right, here's temperature and it's in Kelvin. So R is this gas law constant, which is 0 0.0821. And the units are liters atmosphere divided by moles times Kelvin. So it is because of this number, which is a constant, which is forcing us to be in liters, atmospheres, well, moles are moles, and temperature must be in Kelvin anyway. But it is because of this 0.0821 liters atmospheres that it is forcing us to be in these units. Otherwise, units aren't going to cancel out. All right, now in my last video i also showed you uh what stp is and it's not stone temple pilots all right that was that rock group from my my uh childhood or something uh so anyway it is standard temperature and pressure your temperature is defined as 273.15 i usually just use 273 most people just use 273 and pressure is 1 atm what else did i tell you back in the day all right if, you know last last one or two years ago whenever that was um does it have to be in one atmosphere well it does to use ideal gas law but what if you're in millimeters of mercury do you remember that second page when i showed you 760 millimeters of mercury and 101.3 kilopascal you'll need to convert possibly if you're not giving it into atmospheres um, if it's STP okay 
So here's the first problem, and I'm hoping that this first problem is going to be an aha moment for you, okay? So what is the volume of 1.00 moles of an ideal gas at STP, at standard temperature pressure, all right? So what's my equation? Piv, nert, all right? So now what? Okay, so what is P? P is one atmosphere. What am I looking for? Because that's standard pressure, right? Uh, I'm looking for volume, so I don't know what volume is. Uh, what's that equal to? Well, N is moles, and that's 1.001 three sig figs. So what's R? R is that number I gave you up, up above, 0.0821 liter atmosphere divided by moles Kelvin. And my temperature is standard temperature, which is up here at 273. Now, what I would love for you to do is get out your calculator and solve for V, all right? So it would be one times this, times this, divided by one. Go ahead and uh, take a minute out and do that. And maybe you'll like have an aha moment. Okay, what did you get? Uh, I got 22.4 liters. <gasps> Does that ring a bell? Does that sound familiar? Did you not use that number a lot back in chapter seven? The answer is yes. So back when we were learning moles, we gave you this number and said to trust us. It's, it's a true conversion. It really does work. Now you know why. Isn't that cool? All right, let's look at problem number two. All right, when the temperature of a rigid hollow sphere containing 685 liters of helium gas is held at 621 Kelvin, the pressure of the gas is 900 millimeters of mercury. Ooh, how many moles of helium does that contain? Well, let me just do something real, ah, do something real quick. All right, um, I don't want this to be just 900. I want this to be... 900 point all right i don't like three sig or one sig fig okay so let me just fix that real quick all right so we know that we have ready temperature and liters and here's my temperature and and pressure what's missing well what's missing is moles all right so if moles are missing we need pivner all right there's my pivner so what do i know about pivner Pressure must be in what? Atmospheres. What did I give it to you? I gave it to you in millimeters of mercury. So what does that mean I need to do? I need to convert, don't I? So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so how many atmospheres is 900 millimeters of mercury? Well, what unit has to go on the bottom? Millimeters of mercury, right? So if you need to go back to that second page and what is the conversion for millimeters of mercury to atmospheres? Do you remember that? Go back and look if you don't. All right. All right. Hopefully you remembered it was 760 millimeters of mercury and that would be one ATM. All right. And oops, I need one ATM. All right. Now what? Well, I'm going to divide, so go ahead. What's 900 divided by 760? I got 1.18 uh, ATMs, all right? So now I'm ready to start plugging in these numbers, right? So I have, here we go. Here's my pressure. The one I just found was 1.18 ATM. Notice it's 685 liters. I don't have to do anything with that. I just plug it in equals N. Here's my R, here's my T. All right, so how do you solve for N, all right? Well, I'm going to divide both sides by RT, okay? So here is my R and my T, right? Oh, I lost something, hang on, hang on. Whoop. Lost my unit, that's an important unit, here it is. All right, so why did I do this? I wanted to show you something real quick, all right? Let me get out my pen here. And this is why R is so important, all right? Because this R, I don't change. I can't change this unit. So atmospheres is going to cancel out atmospheres, okay? Liters are gonna cancel out liters. Calvin 
is going to cancel out Kelvin. And what is the only unit left? It is moles. Well, isn't that what I'm looking for? And the answer is yes. So now get out your calculator and what's 118 times 685 divided by 0 0.0821 divided by 621. Now, if you wanted to and use parentheses, you could go 1.18 times 685 divided by parentheses 0.0821 times 621 parentheses. Otherwise, I just hit divided by twice, okay? And what do you get? Make sure you get what I get. I get N is equal to 15.9 moles, okay? Now, I have another question for you, and this is actually a good lead into our very last uh, video, okay? How many grams is that? I'll put it right here. How many grams is 15.9 moles? I'll say it again. How many grams, periodic table, are there in 15.9 moles? All right, yeah, don't forget that. So how many grams are in 15.9 moles? So what unit has to go on the bottom, everyone? Yep, moles. What unit goes on top, everyone? Periodic table. All right, so find helium on your periodic table, and what's the molar mass of helium? Go ahead and look that up. And there it is, I got 4.00 grams. Folks, here's a little bit of uh, foreshadowing. If I have four grams per one mole, that's called the molar mass, isn't it? I just wanted to review that with you real quick. And then what, well, got your calculator. I got 63.6 grams, okay? So that's how the ideal gas law works. So the name of the game is, pressure must be in atmospheres. If it's not, you need to convert. Volume must be in liters, if not, you'll need to convert. Moles needs to be in moles. So what happens if they give you grams of helium gas? Can you figure out how many moles there are? Yes, you can, all right? And temperature has to be in Kelvin. So without any further ado, I will say don't wait to be great. Make sure you do your homework and then check the homework video that Ms. McCauley put together. Let's see who her guest speaker is this time, all right? Don't wait to be great. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.